What's going on YouTube? Today's going to be a good day and a bad day. There's going to be ups and there's going to be downs. We got some unboxings going on today and uh, it's all one topic today. It's definitely horror and uh, it's going to be amazing. So all you YouTube people, I'm Dope and this is Dope Comics and welcome to the show. Today we're going to be talking about a, a one horror property only today uh i was on a show about a month ago comic book g spot comes on saturday nights pretty late and uh g man's the host and uh he wanted me to show him a pre-code horror eerie book which is the first appearance of uh dracula that i have in my collection and when he saw it he just he's a big dracula fan he couldn't believe that he never thought about getting the first appearance of Dracula for his collection. So that made me start thinking, what characters did I grow up with that I love that I didn't have the first appearance of? And one in particular came to mind and it, it opened up the rabbit hole and uh, the hunt was on. And today we're gonna be talking about one guy. One guy in particular. 1984 November 16th you know this movie was released and it scared the crap out of me I was seven years old I had two big sisters that were teenagers and one of them decided to have a sleepover and they went to video vision which is our version of uh what blockbuster is and uh November the 16th was the release date of Nightmare on M Street. So that was 1984. I was seven years old. And I probably creeped around as a little brother. And saw too much of the movie. And been scarred for life. Because before then I was all Scooby Doo. And this was really the first horror movie I'd ever seen. Uh, I saw pieces of it. And I couldn't sleep for a while. It bothered the crap out of me. But that's what horror movies are supposed to do. That was 84. And then 87 came around. And by then I was a big horror fanatic. I was 10 years old. And I was watching, uh, you know, Monster Squad and Lost Boys and stuff. But it all started with one guy. So today we're going to be looking at my haul. And I guess you can figure out what it's about today. But let's get to it. I got... Three or four boxes unboxed. We're going to start with the good, hopefully. I've already got it torn some. Because I hate hearing this crap and I hate how long it takes. But. The movie had uh, was directed by Wes Craven. It had uh, Johnny Depp in it. It had Robert England in it. Uh, made $51 million at the box office. So here we go. We got this. What do we got here? I love the way they boxed this. Slides right out. And we got an empty bag and board. And we got two books here. And the first one, Wapow. This is from 1989. This is, if you look on, uh, uh, key collect key collector whatever it's called the app this is the first appearance in comics of Freddy Krueger this is 1989 five years after Nightmare on M Street came out there's one other comic it was a number three it came out in 1988 that had Freddy Krueger on the cover but the inside of it was just clips of the movie and there was no story and it's just him on the cover so some people will say that's the first Nightmare on M Street, first Freddy Krueger comic, even though it's not a comic book and it's just black and white pictures of the movie inside. But most everybody I talk to, including Key Collector, says this is the first appearance of Freddy Krueger in comics. It's magazine size. It was put out by Marvel. Uh, it's number one from 1989. And I don't know why I didn't have this before. 
Because you got to have the first appearance of Freddy Krueger. Why not, right? And, of course, it ain't bagged or board, boarded or anything, so I'm going to have to be a little bit careful with it. And it was a two series. There's two issues in the series. So this is part two. And it is a cool cover. Uh, kind of mind you the Conan covers and stuff in the big magazines. But this is 1989. And this is the whole series. If you got both of these, you got issue one and two. So that is the first appearance of Freddy Krueger. Uh, you can pick them up for about, you can get a good copy Two or three hundred dollars. You can get a ragged out one probably for fifty bucks. And then issue two is usually about thirty something bucks for a ragged out copy. But anyway, let's get to it. So then, you know, that's magazine form. That's a big. I know it's comic and it says on there it's the first appearance in comics. If you think there's other people that's had first appearance in comics as being in magazine forward, Rocket Raccoon. Uh, uh, Iron Fist. Uh, there's a couple other ones that had their first appearance in a uh, magazine form. But anyway, I wanted also the first appearance in a comic book. Size comic book. If that makes any sense. So I started digging around trying to find out what that was. And I found out the first comic book size comic of Freddy, and also his second book ever to come out came out in 1991. Dang, another layer. And so I had to get the 1991 comic book of Freddy. So I set out on that adventure and I got this. Packed a lot better than the first one. I'm happy with the first one. This is, might be some of the hardest openings I've had to do to get out a freaking book. All right. So this is, this is badass is what this is. This is from 1991. This is Nightmare on M Street, issue one. This is, goes for probably, I don't know what they go for. They're hard to find. They're made by Innovation. Uh, innovation went around long, 1991. I don't think the series did real well. Uh, most people who collect comics are not looking for, you know, Nightmare on M Street. Most people that like Nightmare on M Street, the movies, probably not looking for this comic. So I don't think they sold a lot of them. Plus, you know, probably had bad marketing being Innovation. But this is number one of the Innovation run. There's six issues in this run. And this is, you know, the second series that ever came out. And it's 1991. In 1991, I'd have been, you know, 13 years old. So, here is package number two. And I guess you see the way this trend's heading. You can kind of figure out what this is. Six in the series. So... Let's see what this is. Dang. All the shit is pretty much just packed like shit. Nobody put nothing in the bag board. Here we go. So this is a packed row of junkie. I'll just lay these right here. Show you. This is number two. This is pretty hard to find, made by Innovation, number two. 
Uh, you can see, look how clean this is. No spine ticks whatsoever. No spine ticks. Look at that. Perfect condition, right? Anyway, beautiful book. Issue number two. Here is issue number three. Here is my favorite cover of all of them. This is a badass cover, and I'm not joking around this time. I might have been joking about the spine ticks, but serious. This is, check that out. Issue number four in the graveyard. These people look a little creepy, and it look a little bit better if this hand one here. You know, this is all you need to creep people out. You got Freddy back there. That's issue number four. Back of them is pretty cool, too. So, all of them's got that on the back. So, and then you got issue number five. And I know I told you it was a six part series. So, I got one box left. I wonder what the other box has in it. But before I open that up, let me tell you. Number six is the hardest book. It's probably the most rarest book of any of the Nightmare on M Street books. Usually you might find one on eBay and they're about $250. Right now, I think there's two on eBay. One is $248 and one is $250 for Nightmare on M Street number six from 1991. Well, uh, I scored one and I was happy to get it. And I was all excited because I got a pretty good deal on it. And I got it from somebody that was not a comic book store. There's more like an antique store. The money went to charity. So, of course, them people don't know how to pick pack shit. And, you know, I told you there's ups and downs on the show. That was all the ups. Here's the downs. This is what the packaging looked like. Whoop, cover up the address. But here's what the packaging looked like when I got it today. It's got black prints all over it. It's got it was all beat up. It was folded in just about half in my mailbox. Corner up here, totally exposed, been beat up. And this is a $250 book. But I don't sell books. I'm not a 9-8 snob. Shit like that don't bother me too much because I still have the book. This one ought to be easy to unpackage since there's nothing in there but bubble tape. Whoop. Gosh, dang. This one is a really beat up number six. This is the last issue. Super rare. I believe that the, that the series is probably stinking up pretty bad. And I imagine... Innovation Comics was stinking up real bad, and it's probably going broke. So, they didn't put out a whole bunch of this issue. Anywhere you look on Comic Collector or Key Collector or any of that kind of shit, tells you that this is the rarest book, very hard to find, and that's why some of them other books are like $25, and this one is $250. And as you can see, this whole top end was sticking out. Got me a good crease right there. This corner. Might have been this corner. It's all beat up. Sticking out. But, look at that. Awesome back on this one. Only one that's got a different back. But this is no longer a $250 book. Uh, I didn't pay $250 for it, but I couldn't sell it for $250 now like I thought I could. Even though I've never sold a book. This is probably, if I ever sold it, would be probably 60 bucks now. But anyway, it is beautiful. It's not for sale. Could never get another one. It's rare. This is Nightmare on M Street 6. So, that is my comic haul for today. That's how Nightmare on M Street become Nightmare in Evergreen Estates. That's where I live. I got a beat up book. So, they're all beat up, but I got one book that's really just chucked out you know what i mean the whole corner's broke off of the damn envelope but anyway 
if you liked what you see and you, you like what you see and you want to see more content like this, just subscribe down below. If you don't like what you see, just subscribe down below and don't watch it. But either way, uh, hit that little, little bell too, or whatever that little thing is, little thumbs up. I think it is and like it and, uh, leave a comment down below and, uh, I just tell you now, I'm probably going to be looking for some uh, first appearances of Michael Myers next. Uh, I'm not big on the first appearance of Jason because it's a shitty book. It's uh, Satan 6. Satan 6 by Topps Comics. I think it's number 3. It can be had for about $10. But uh, until we meet again, my friends. Pew, pew.